life shrinks or expands in proportion to one's courage. You don't get to choose how you're going to die or when, but you can decide how you're going to live. Now, security is mostly a superstition. It does not exist in nature, nor do the children of men as a whole experience it. Avoiding danger is no safer in the long run than outright exposure. Life is either a daring adventure or nothing. Only put off until tomorrow what you are willing to die having left undone. Don't let what you cannot do interfere with what you can do. Never let the odds keep you from doing what you know in your heart you are meant to do. Give me six hours to chop down a tree and I will spend the first four sharpening the axe. Good morning. Trust is something that has to be earned. All the philosophers in the world will tell you that uh, trusting in somebody can sometimes be an accident waiting to happen. A lot of people put their trust in people only to be disappointed. You know, we've seen a lot of that. It's the whodunit mystery here. I got a communique from sick grandpa who wrote me, I got something you might want. And I said, nothing you have, I want. So it's the whodunit mystery having to do with a guy's passport. Now, things have gotten pretty embarrassing for an individual out here. It got so bad and desperate that he came on with a live stream, guised under his, of course, girlfriend's channel name, which of course is his, and made believe that it was he was his brother. And of course, everybody's seen through that. It was quite embarrassing, actually. I almost couldn't listen to it, it was so embarrassing. Well, I guess he figures I'm out on camera, if I'm making believe I'm my brother, but she doesn't even have a brother. <laughs> I can say what I want and get away with it. But it's this kind of behavior that has gotten this person into the trouble that he's in. I just don't really think his dreams and goals and endeavors are going to come true. Because he's fighting against himself all the time. All the time. He's fighting against himself. And it's sad because he's doing this to himself. Are you doing it to him? It's not like I'm really doing it to him. I think he's uh, pretty much doing it all to himself. Galton Buddha always used to tell his students that our words can be very powerful. He said that our tongue, which we use to speak, is like the sharpest knife in the world. He also said that the most dangerous weapon in the world is our words. Even though they don't physically hurt people, our words can hurt people emotionally. Our words can be a source of strength, but they can also be a weakness if we don't know when, where, and how much to speak. When we speak kindly and wisely at the right moments, it can lead to success. But if we speak unkindly or at the wrong times, it can make our life very difficult. So, friends, today I'll share a story about the importance of staying silent and how it has the power to change your life. Well, you know, in this case, uh, staying silent uh with this individual is really not an option. It's kind of like a disease that just, you know, just continues on. It's like a nervous tick that you can't control. You just do it all the time. And this kind of behavior just gets people into trouble all the time. That's what's going on. And uh, desperation is speaking very loud. This commentary is brought to you by, mm, over three years, taking bullshit from somebody. That's my sponsor. It's the bullshit that's been going on for at least three years or more with one individual. In particular, I'm not a philosopher, but I would say that you put yourself into your own position by your actions, by your words. There's nobody else responsible other than yourself. There's a beginning to something and there's an end to something. The end, well, does not always turn out very well. When somebody is persistent in doing things that are not deemed to be factual, have any niceties, that don't have any merit, that are vicious, the end results are not usually very good. And they find themselves in a position that they only wished and hoped and dreamed that they could get out of. I want to listen to a little more of this philosophy here for a PPT, second. Which was you know, the I was of thinking the that uh, some of these philosophies I've been listening to this morning is, is actually very good. To finish up with this guy's story here, it's called Being Silent Will Get You Everything in Life. Galton Buddha always used to tell his students that our words can be very powerful. He said that our tongue, which we use to speak, is like the sharpest knife in the world. He also said that the most dangerous weapon in the world is our words. Even though they don't physically hurt people, our words can hurt people emotionally.
Well, you know, words can hurt people, and it's according to what they say. Now, going around calling somebody a child molester, and I know this is getting dragged out and very old, and it has for me. Very powerful words. People wonder, why have you gone this far with this? Are you obsessed with this person? Yes, I am obsessed with what this person said, but it has to do with somebody else's character. There are things you could leave alone and, is, and walk away from, and there are things that you just cannot if you are human. If you respect yourself, respect your family, respect your own values, there are things that people say that you cannot just let go. Emotionally, our words can be a source of strength, but they can also be a weakness if we don't know when, where, and how much to speak. When we speak kindly and wisely at the right moments, it can lead to success. But if we speak unkindly or at the wrong times, it can make our life very difficult. As we have in this particular situation going on, it's quite embarrassing some of the things I've been listening to or reading and listening. It's not a matter of, uh, you know, leave it alone, let it be, let the guy live his life. In other situations, I could say that and, and let it be, but unfortunately, when you have a, a person like this who doesn't realize the ill of their wrongs and they just continue on despite the consequences that have been imposed upon themselves that they basically created you can't feel any compassion for anybody in that situation it's just almost impossible then they continue to go on a route that got them in trouble in the first place now the first mistake somebody will make is to trust somebody on you yeah, i'm going to help you no one are going to help themselves to a lot of money. I heard figures of 200,000 pesos. That's a lot of money. Where did it go? On a cell phone? Where did it go? You can't trust anyone on YouTube. Nobody is your friend. And I've known this for years. But some people are so gullible, or maybe they're too desperate. They put their trust in anybody that's willing to say, hey, I'll help you out. Hey, give me your passport. Now, you never let loose of your passport. However, in this situation, generally, on an immigration issue, that immigration holds on to the passport. Now, I don't know who's claiming that they have the passport or who doesn't have it or whatever. It's irrelevant to me. Passport is a key here. It's a key to a lot of things. Obviously, from all the readings and community postings I've seen, that there's a lot of chicanery going on here. Who's right and who's wrong? It's the whodunit mystery as far as trusting somebody with something that's very valuable of yours. Or trusting somebody's words. I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. That's the first mistake. That's the first mistake. You don't trust anyone on YouTube. If you haven't learned that already, then I guess you'll never learn. Deadliest mistake. It's good to trust somebody. It's good to have somebody to trust in, but you cannot put your trust in somebody unless maybe they're family. You could trust them implicitly if you have a good relationship with your family. But you can't trust an outsider and somebody on YouTube. That's crazy. Not with important documents and setting them out to do a job when you know that well, the history you've had with that person hasn't been good. And just because they've been friendly with you, say, hey, what the hell? That's your first mistake. Or second, think of the past. Were they supporting you in the past? Or were they were your adversary? Someone didn't think it out well enough, I guess. Now, look at the situation. It's a mess. It's a mess in so many ways. Even Sheila. Apparently, I thought that shit was over. But apparently, there is a case out there still with Sheila. You know who Sheila was in relationship to the person question we're talking about that's still on the that's still on the table we got so many issues here that if i was in his position his position i i wouldn't be able to sort it out either the guy's at a jail cell and he's still being cocky i mean what's with that is it like that nervous tick thing you just can't help what you're doing the muscle spasm that you can't get rid of i don't know is it a run it of the mouth disease that you can't control and all this all this has gotten this individual into all the trouble he's in now all of this but he can't seem to stop it and he comes on my name is troy and i'm so-and-so's brother now that was embarrassing for him the guys of his girlfriend's channel to say hey i can't get in trouble i can say anything i want on this my cat my picture's not on there you know my face ain't on camera <laughs> and it's under my girlfriend's channel name but then again you look on it about and there's his paypal and everything under his name and everything else so that that's that's retarded that's being a fucktard right there <laughs> That is being a fight. By the way, I figured out who the copycat channel was finally. I won't discuss it out here. I, now I know who it is. Because that person was also dealing with this individual and trusting something. With. We won't go into that. I, I, I finally know who the copycat channel is. It took a while to figure it out. And I had my doubts 
but I had my hints. I'm pretty sure now I know who it is. We won't dwell on that. Just keep that in the back pocket. It's a mess is what it is. And uh, I'm going to tell you something right now. On the path of destruction, when you continue on the path of your own destruction, where you can't shut your mouth and making situations worse for yourself rather than being able to give yourself one iota of hope, but it's called self-destruction. Nobody does that. It's, they do it to themselves and they're doing it very well. Look, you can't trust anybody with money on here. Money's not going to help this guy anymore at this point. I can guarantee you that. It's just not enough money to go around to take care of all the things he needs to take care of. It just really isn't. I've done the math in my head. And there's a certain level of generosity on YouTube that kind of peaks out at one point and then collapses. But then when he just did this embarrassing show, make you believe he was his brother, that really didn't boost the confidence in people. When he came on there and said, I've never said this about this guy. I never called him this and prove it in the same rhetoric you've been hearing for three years. It just sends people into a tailspin as far as wanting to support this guy. And, uh finding a reason to do it yeah his future is fucked up but you know who did it i don't think he's got a snowball's chance in hell to get anything to work in his favor at this point even have a new lawyer you know what i said new lawyer take over his case and they've seen everything that's behind this they're not gonna do it. maybe they'll take the retainer money maybe some other lawyers might have and run away and say i can't do this man you got too much against an outlaw oh no no you're an outlaw. If you defy the laws of immigration, you are an outlaw. No excuses about administrative thing. That's all nonsense. Total nonsense. He's in jail. Call it what you want. Then, of course, the other charges. There's no way in hell he's getting married. There's no way in hell he's going to be escorted home, repatriated. You know, there's no way in hell that's going to happen. I know. When you're in a desperate situation, you're grabbing for straws, anything. But come on, to come on a show and a live stream again because you still couldn't shut your mouth and you didn't learn and you're making believe that you're your brother Troy which you don't even have a fucking brother and everybody knows it was you and they're just laughing their ass off what a chump this guy is so desperate is this guy he's so desperate just to get even a couple of bucks worth of super chat or, or not super chat but you know paypal or whatever that he's defying everything just to get a few bucks to donations from people that's pretty sad. And he feels he has to come on under all this adversity where he knows lawfulness says that he shouldn't even be on. He shouldn't be doing any shows at all. At all. Running his mouth like fucking uncontrollable fucking projectile vomit or diarrhea. When does one learn? I guess in this fella's case, I guess he'll never learn. He's out for self-punishment that he don't even realize. Don't even realize. I'm constantly amazed. I mean, I truly am. I've seen stupidity in my life. I witnessed it, but I've never. Let me tell you something. Trust is a kind of a, a reliance that gives rise, not merely to disappoint, but to serve, well, kind of a sense of betrayal when one's trust is actually violated, okay? And you know, a trustworthy person is one who can be counted on as a matter of the sort of person he or she might be to take care of those things that others entrust to one, but can't apply this. One who is worthy of your trust and one who trusts you in return, who listens to you and is patient with you. Follow him wherever he goes. If you can find that type of person, very hard. People just can't learn. There's a famous quote from a Buddha that says, the root of suffering is attachment. Nothing is forever except change. And do not look for a sanctuary in anyone except yourself. Good words. You know what the Stanford Encyclopedia says about trust? Trust is important, but it is also dangerous. It is important because it allows us to depend on others. For love, for advice, for help with your plumbing, or whatever you have, especially when we know that no outside force compels them to give us these things. But trust also involves the risk that people we trust will not pull through for us. Or if there were some guarantee, they would pull through. Then we would have no need to trust them. Trust is therefore, folks, dangerous. What we risk while trusting is the loss of valuable things that we entrust to others, including our self-respect, perhaps, which can be shattered by the betrayal of our trust. Because trust is risky, the question of when it is warranted is of particular importance. In this context, 
warranted means justified or well-grounded meaning, respectively that the trust is rational. It is based on good evidence or that it successfully targets a trustworthy person. If trust is a war is warranted in these senses, then the danger of it is either minimum is minimalized or with justified trust or eliminated altogether, as with a well-grounded trust. Leaving the danger of trust aside, one could also ask whether trust is warranted in the sense of being plausible. That's pretty good stuff. You trust nobody on social media. Nobody. Nobody. Now, I don't know who's given this guy advice and allowing him to come on and doing shows like this, but that might all end pretty soon. When somebody doesn't learn from their mistakes, well, they have to wind up paying for more mistakes. And the end result of what happens when you try to defy the law, in this case, is a number of things. It's immigration and other things. When you're basically belittling the immigration system, They're saying they don't care about nothing. They don't care about foreigners. They're not going to do anything between two foreigners fighting with each other. They're not going to do this. Well, maybe that's wishful thinking. But where has it gotten you so far to prove yourself wrong on that philosophy? In other words, fuck the BI. In your situation, I would not have that attitude of fuck the Bureau of Immigration. Desecrate their name and what they're all about. I, I don't think that's really going to help one bit. Not one bit. Trusting in other people who were never trustworthy to begin with. Who's taken people's donations and bought his girlfriend a cell phone how can you trust somebody like that how could you put your trust and or your passport in somebody like that hands who says that they're going to help you but they haven't done shit for you that's your bad that's your bad this all has become a big mess for this individual a huge mess trust yourself never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known god love all trust a few do wrong to none when it comes to mistrust although he regards generalized mistrust as a sign of bad character he also thinks that harassing mistrust can be valued in at least two different domains we won't go on with that why is trust important in life well the one that's the glue of the one thing the one glue of society is called trust and the presence cements relationships by allowing people to live and work together feel safe and belong to a group. Trust in a leader allows organizations and communities to flourish, while the absence of trust can cause fragmentation, conflict even more. So when you put your trust out to somebody on here, you're not doing yourself any rewards, not doing yourself a favor. It was his bad to put his trust in anyone who claims to be an ally, claims to be a friend, claims to be helping him. Where has it gotten him so far? Not that I'm concerned about the individual whatsoever. He's deserving of whatever he has coming to him. But I think the Gagnols for this guy to come on live streams when he's sitting in fucking detention, which is a crime and, and immigration, defiance of the codes and laws of Republican Act on immigration is a crime no matter how you look at it. He took try to sugarcoat it and said, I'm not a criminal, I'm not in jail. Then leave out all the other consequences of five counts of cybercrime against him. And why does he have five counts of cybercrime against him? because he committed those offenses, that's why. And his life has been changed. His whole life is now changed. And who did it? Heard it a who done it mystery? Well, we know who did it. He did it to himself. Enough philosophy for me today. You reap what you sow and all that other good crap. This bullshit coming on is your brother and people are laughing at you, not with you, my friend. And you're not my friend. People are laughing out. You think you could trust Brevis? You think you could trust Ricky? You think you could trust any one of these people? Think again. Think again. There ain't no money in the world that's going to help this guy out at this point. Not truly. No matter what, he's going to be fighting a case that there's no win on. And all the bullshit that the first arraignment, they're going to throw it out. Because I'm going to come out with some paper. You don't even have a chance to say shit in the first arraignment. Your record is, is ready produced. Everything you've done is on record, even with Sheila, me, everyone, is coming to that courtroom. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. You fucked up like you've been doing all your life. You lied about never beating up your wife. What have you ever told the truth about since you have been on YouTube? What have you ever told the truth about other than admitting through proxy of your so-called brother that you're an idiot okay so where do you stand now where pretty bad place that's all i gotta say and i said i'm out for this morning
I need to go about my business, which is my business. I've been making a series of videos lately by choice, not really by wants, but by choice. And I got to sneeze, pardon me. Because <coughs> I think this thing has come to crescendo. I think this thing has actually come to a head. Man, you fucked yourself up. Royal. Convince myself of what? There's nothing to convince myself of. <laughs> convince myself of what? I'm already convinced of what this guy's all about. I'm already convinced of where this is all going and the scare tactics and everything else and outdated documents and lawyers that have quit pro pro <laughs> that have quit on him outdated summary deportations outdated legal paper that it might have been written up by somebody other than an actual lawyer as clever as it was nobody wants to represent somebody who has that much against him sure they'll take your retainer sure why not and bye bye when you can't shut your fucking pie hole when you can't shut your fucking mouth that's when you are basically stabbing yourself with the sharpest dagger you don't have the capability yeah of stopping not paying my lawyer <laughs> my lawyer's been paid off for a long time oh propaganda i guess on youtube i'm paying my lawyer <laughs> I'm in touch with him almost every other day. I don't owe my lawyer any money. He's paid up, even for the trial. The only thing I got to pay is when the trial comes, his visitation, you know, like it's in any, any case. You got to pay for appearances. Well, a couple of more bucks to get a little something extra done for me that I talked about on a previous show. Yeah, that that's paid. Anything else? <laughs> if I wasn't paying my lawyer, he wouldn't be representing me. How's that for an answer? <laughs> Dairy Queen, come on. My lawyer is well taken care of, always has been. He's there for me when I need him. There's nothing he doesn't know about. There's nothing he's not aware of. As per proof, that's going to come up pretty soon, which is a little Christmas present for the guy that caused, is causing this to perhaps happen by his own doings, making his situation and incarceration even worse. Okay, there you go. Listen to the philosophers in life. A lot of things they have to say is, is pretty unique and uh, something to kind of go by. Just asking, they were saying on another channel they had a conversation recorded where you were. Oh, there's always issues with a lawyer. Remember, you're paying somebody dearly. There's always issues with a lawyer. Sure, I've had issues. Issues and tissues. I always work them out, just like a relationship. You might have issues and tissues in a relationship here and there. But then you work it out. A lawyer's no different. Because you're in a relationship with the lawyer, financial and other. There are times I thought that he could have pushed a little harder on something. Yeah. We talk about things like that. Then he comes through. You gotta make yourself very clear when you have an attorney what you're trying to accomplish, sir. Because it's not free service. It's not that they like you personally or like your personal friend. It's a business like anything else. They, they, who are they, Dairy Queen? They are making up, they are making up. You talk about trolls, Dairy Queen. They were saying on another channel that they had a conversation recorded where you were having issues with the lawyer sure i've had a few times i've had issues with a lawyer sure but then you make yourself very clear what you're trying to accomplish you put these issues aside like i said like any relationship there's going to be issues but you resolve them hope that answers your question okay i don't have much more to say don't have a big audience here this early but uh, it is what it is i think uh, this has been pretty much dragged out a funny thing happened on the way to the store <laughs> By the way, I can't do live shows on my phone. I just can't tell you why, but I can't do live shows on my phone. My computer itself is going to be retired. If I ever do anything, it'll be on a phone. It might be an upload or something, I'm guessing. My computer might be retired forcibly. <laughs> forcibly. Forcibly. We won't get into that, but yeah, it might be. Well, not really forcibly. This is the only thing I use to put out my live streams on here. And I think this thing needs to go in a closet in retirement for a while. That's for sure. Um, what you're listening to is a secondary channel. The other channel is still connected. It still exists. I still go with videos on. It's all there. The subscribers, everything is still there. It's not over. Karma is coming. Whoop, whoop. Karma is coming to who? I don't think you understand who you're supporting, sick grandpa. Are you pro your buddy or are you not pro your buddy? Karma is coming to who, sick grandpa? Want to elaborate? <laughs> he retracts his message. That's being cowardice. Karma, karma, karma. Karma chameleon. You don't know if you're coming or going there, sick grandpa. Are you really holding his uh, passport? Mm, that's a 
I would think that's illegal. Not that I'm trying to stick up for the guy, but I would think that's highly illegal. Highly illegal. Karma is coming. You're right. Karma came already on somebody, and it is going to be more. You say karma is coming. Why did you run away when uh, somebody came to town? Why did you run away? Sick Grandpa says, not leaving anything. How you something snitch on? I love that last Hungarian sausage. I don't even think that is Sick Grandpa, but it might be. Oh, yeah. Love that Hungarian sauce. I'm, I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> but he's retracting his messages, though. Well, you are a coward. Why do you put yourself in so much trouble there, Ricky? I don't understand that. What do you get off on all this? Fucking, fucking the, the goober over and everything. Fucking everybody else over. Fucking all these women over. What do you, uh, what do you get out of this? Uh, you know, I think we're all curious about that. What is you get out of this? But to answer your question, no, I don't have any problems with my attorney. I don't have any problems with my relationship. I'm happy as a clam on a summer day on a beautiful beach with white sand and a nice breeze blowing. All is good in my geographical and personal and moral perpetuities of life. Perpetuity. Perpetuity here. All is good at the Ponderosa and otherwise. Hope that answers your questions. Live your life, folks. To be in somebody's position, don't think you'd want that. And as far as him staying where he is, he ain't moving anywhere. Hmm, we'll see about that. There's another lockup that's close to Barilli, and it's not really a great one. It'd be a change of atmosphere, but good possibility. That's gonna be the one that they're gonna put him in. Hmm, yeah. He may not have all the privileges that he has where he is now. In fact, what I heard, from a little bird is that a lot of his privileges just might be taken away. Ricky, why don't you come over and have a sausage here? We'll, we'll buy, we'll see if we can find any more Hungarian sausage. Come over and talk to me. Ricky, come on. Come on, come over and talk to me. Maybe the lovely Gilda and I will prepare you another breakfast. Does that sound nice? Might even have you sit in our air conditioned uh, living room. How'd you like that? Might even offer you a beer. Ladies and gentlemen and others, reap what you sow. It all comes back at you sooner or later. Some people, learn some people don't learn and they just continue to be on the same path of destruction that got them here in the first place i have no control what everybody does but they have a control what they do i can't tell them what to do or how to do it but if they get themselves in a big mess it's up to them to get themselves out you know lick your wounds and try to move on with your life lick your wounds try to heal up. but deal with reality not fantasy the predicament you put yourself in is something that you got yourself into not anybody else that's a cop-out, total cop-out. I think it is. 